वृंदावना सिंहितावतार प्रसिद्ध राधा प्रण प्रचार फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल ऑफर में मिलियंस ऑफ ओबेसेंस इज टू लोटस फीट ऑफ अस्मदि गुरु पाद पद्म मित्तला प्रेट जग गुरु शिष्य मत भक्ति वेदांत नारायण गोसाई महाराज त्रिवेंद्र स्वामी शिष्य भक्ति दान दंडी महाराज नाम निष्ठ संत श्री अनिरुद्ध दास प्रभु जी ऑल द वैष्णवास वैष्णवीज वर गैदर्ड हियर for this online class uh, with accept my humble obeisances so we are very fortunate that we are um, studying bhagavad gita now ram nam is also coming very soon and uh, uh, ram and krishna they are non different uh, krishna is avatar avatari and ram is avatar so um, it is very very important to study uh, if you want to understand the life of ram then you have to study bhagavad gita so the verse today is sadrusham cheshate svasya prakruti rjyanavan api prakrutim yanti bhutani nigraha kim karishyati sadrusham accordingly cheshate tries svasya by his own prakruti he modes of nature Now modes means there are three modes: sattva gun, raja gun, and tamo gun. The mode of goodness, mode of passion, and mode of ignorance. Um, actually, yesterday I was listening to a class by Sri Rajendra Ji Maharaj, and he was making a point. Actually, he is telling that uh, Krishna was uh, pressing when Mother Yashoda was trying to catch him. Krishna was pressing his lower lip by his teeth. Now he said that the teeth are white and they represent the mode of goodness, and lower lip represents um, greed. Huh? Lower lip represents greed. He was telling him this because apparently um, uh, in Bhagavatam also it is told that um, the greed arose from Krishna's lower lip. So he said that lower lip um, uh, once lower lip actually represents Greed, and one has to subdue the greed. Greed by um, uh, um, by one's mode of goodness. Huh? So low bhaku. Um, so actually, um, he was making a point like that. So, anyways, there are modes of nature. Gyan one means a learned person. Huh? So learned means gyan. Gyan. Gyan also has two types. Tat purush gyan, tan purush gyan. Tat purush gyan means the knowledge about the um the parmatma tan purush gyan is the knowledge about the soul huh? and there is also one type of uh, mis- misleading knowledge called um, um jiva brahma ekya gyan means jiva and brahma are one jiva and parmatma are one this is a misleading knowledge huh? so we are talking here about those who have the knowledge about the super soul parmatma and atma api although prakritim nature prakriti huh? yanti undergo utani all living entities so in sanskrit in hindi they say bhut means actually they say ghost but here in sanskrit bhuta means all living entities all living entities are called bhuta um and uh, nigraha repression repression nigraha nigraha means basically controlling or repression kim what karishyati can do even a man of knowledge acts according to his own nature for everyone follows his nature what can depression accomplish mm. so you see that many times uh, people think that i will be sober mm. i will not behave in such a certain manner but impulsively they behave in a manner which their lands them in trouble mm. which lands them in trouble mm. so uh, there are many impulses mm. There is there is impulse of uh, you know opposite sex, impulse of wealth, impulse of gold, mm, impulse of uh, you know so many things. Mm. Impulse is there, and eh? so although someone even in knowledge uh, sometimes he becomes tempted. Mm, uh, even if he tries to repress his mind, the mind doesn't listen, eh? and he will engage in the forbidden activity anyways. Eh? So unless one is situated on the transcendental platform of Krishna consciousness, he cannot get free from the influence of the modes of material nature, as it is confirmed by the Lord in the seventh chapter. Devi esha guna mai mama maya duratya mama vaye prapadante maya metam tarandite. 
So basically, this Maya of Krishna is Devi. Hmm? It's transcendental. Oh, this is divine Maya. Hmm? Devi Esha Gunami. Mama Maya Dhrataya. Mamevaya Prapadyante Maya Metam Tarantate. Now here, this is the seventh chapter, Vigyan Yoga. The verse number uh, 14 is, uh, you know, um, Prabhupada is telling that Devi Esha Gunami. Hmm? This external energy of mind, which consists of the three modes and which bewilders the living entities, is certainly very difficult to overcome. But those who take exclusive shelter of me can easily transcend this Maya. Hmm. So the following question may be raised. How can one become free from the delusion created by the three modes of nature? In response, Sri Bhagavan speaks this verse beginning with Devi. This Maya is called Devi because she deludes the Devi gods. The living entities who are divine by nature but who are absorbed in the sporting pleasures of sense enjoyment. This Maya is Gunamai, composed of the three modes. The word Gunamai has another meaning, the form of a strong rope with three strands. So this Maya is very binding. You'll see that um, uh, telling that um, um, Rishabdi, I think there was a king called Nabi. Nabi, he had a son uh, by the name Rishabdi. Mm. So actually, when he had the son, um, he actually called the Brahmanas. He, he said, "Oh, I have begotten a son. So what should be the name for him?" And they said his name should be Rishabh. Rishabh means best among the men. Best among the men, but hearing that name, Rishabh, oh, he became very angry. Mm. He became very angry. He said, How you named him best among everyone? Rishabh. Rishabh means actually a lion or the best among everyone. So Indra, he stopped raining actually that time. He said, I will not give any rain anymore because you named him Rishabh. Uh, you know, you didn't call me Rishabh, you called him this, uh, this particular ordinary mortal to be Rishabh. But he didn't know that Rishabh is actually incarnation of Bhagwan. So when Rishabh Dev came to know that there is no rain, because Jalayava Jivan, how can you survive without water? Not possible to survive without water. So therefore, this Rishabh, um, he showered the nectarian rain by his own power. Then Indra realized that actually I have committed an offense at the lotus feet of uh, Rishabh Dev, and he asked for goodness from him. Now, in order to satisfy Rishabh Dev, Indra offered his own daughter. Indra has a son by the name Jayanta, and Indra also has a daughter by the name Jayanti. So he offered the hand of Jayanti to Rishabh Dev. Now, Rishabh Dev apparently became um, very happy to accept the hand of Jayanti, and he begot in her womb 100 children. Out of them, 100 children, nine became like uh, now you have others, Paramahamsas. And 81 men became almost self realized. So you see that, uh, and one, the eldest among them was Bharat Chakravarti, Puma, whose after name this India is named. So Indra offered his daughter, Jayanti. And then now what happened actually, generally speaking, you have one father, one mother. Every girl has one mother, one father. And every boy also has one mother, one father. But when the boy and girl get married, means you become someone's daughter-in-law, then your mother-in-law and your father-in-law both become like your parents, godparents, not my real parents, but godparents. Means they become as equal as your parents. If every girl thinks that my, my biological mother and biological father and my mother-in-law and father-in-law both are equal, then there will be no problem in households. So, um, the Indra also thought that he has become my son-in-law. So, son-in-law is as good as the son. So, Rishabdev has become like my son. So, certainly he will not try to take my kingdom. So, he allowed Rishabdev to perform 100 of, uh, horse sacrifices. Generally, anyone who performs 100 horse sacrifices, Indra becomes scared. Because that person can take over the kingdom of heaven. But Rishabdev was not interested. And Indra was also confident. Indra doesn't allow anyone to perform 100 horse sacrifices. But he was confident that he is my son-in-law. He will not take my kingdom. So he allowed Rishabh Dev to 
um, without any obstruction, perform hundred horse sacrifices. So uh, everyone is under the modes of material nature. No? Everyone is under. Everyone is worried about their position. No? So uh, we have to come to the platform of Krishna consciousness, like Rishabdev. The Rishabdev is accepted as the first guru of the Jain Sampradaya. The Jains accept him as Adina, the original preceptor. <clears throat> so therefore, Prabhupada is telling that therefore, even for the most highly educated person on the mundane plane, it is impossible to get out of the entanglement of Maya simply by theoretical knowledge or by separating the soul from the body. The person may be very educated, he has he may have many degrees, but he cannot come out of this snare of Maya. The, but theoretical knowledge. Even if he thinks that I am not this body, I am a spirit soul, still that will not help. There are many so-called spiritualists who outwardly pose to be advanced in the science, but inwardly or privately are completely under the particular force of nature which they are unable to surpass. So you see that in India, a lot of spiritualists, they claim that I am very advanced, but they cannot transcend this force of nature. Um, academically, one may be very learned, but because of his long association with material nature, he is in bondage. Right? So people may have many degrees, many qualifications, degrees and diplomas, but they are not very useful in spiritual life. <clears throat> because they are in bondage, they, are, they have not controlled their senses yet. Because they have been associating with the sense objects for such a long time, their senses are still unrestrained. Means one may get all the grains in this world, all the beautiful women in this world. One may get all the goats, all the cows, all the milk products in this world. But still one will not be satisfied by incessant supply of all the sense objects. Even one person cannot be satisfied. Hmm. Suppose you want to, um, you are doing fire sacrifice. And after you are pouring oblation of ghee in the fire sacrifice and if you continue to pour ghee in the fire sacrifice or you start uh, keep offering wood and sacrificial wood and cow dung patties then that fire will never extinguish mm. so our sense objects our senses are like burning flame and more sense objects which are like ghee clarified butter we put in our uh, senses the fire of our senses then our senses will become even stronger, even stronger, even stronger. No one will be able to um, control the senses by continuing to pamper one's sense objects. Controlling to pamper our senses by giving them sense objects. Suppose I stop giving ghee in the fire sacrifice. What will happen? Uh, after I start stop pouring ghee in the fire sacrifice, it will slowly, slowly that fire will die. Understand that fire will be extinguished naturally right? so if you don't uh, entertain your senses your senses will demand sense objects but if you just reject them if you don't give them these sense objects then slowly slowly they'll become weaker but if you keep on giving them their desired sense objects uh, then um, then what will happen then your senses will become very strong so you'll see that one time <clears throat> one parikrama party was going in Braj, they are doing Brajavandal Parikrama. So then what happened that um, the Parikrama party of these devotees, they stayed in a village. And in the village, they <clears throat> offered them nice uh, kachoris, uh, puris, sabji. And they also gave everyone a lot of, lot of rabadi. Uh, rabadi is actually uh, this particular um, Milk preparation, very condensed milk is called rabadi. They gave everyone rabadi. Um, and everyone ate, like some people ate even one kilo, two kilos rabadi also. Because it is very rare to get that. Everyone got heart full of rabadi. But then all of them had started having dysentery and uh, cholera. And you know, the whole Parikrama party, two days, there were not enough doctors in the Kosi area. Then they had to approach to some nearby Palwal and in Haryana and get doctors from even Delhi and they were given the saline water, you know, and uh, drip and somehow they survived. But afterwards, if anyone knew Parikrama, after two, three days, they were supposed to stay in Kosi for maybe one day, but 
they ended up staying two three days because everyone became so sick eating the rabadi so when if anyone would give them rabadi after that incident they would say no 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 we don't want rabadi we don't want rabadi they were so scared because they remembered what happened last time they had rabadi they got very severe dysentery uh, came on the verge of death death understand so uh, the senses uh, we try to enjoy the sense objects but sometimes the sense objects can go out of control mm. so krishna consciousness helps one to get out of the material entanglement even though one may be engaged in his prescribed duties so krishna consciousness actually helps us get out of the material entanglement even though one may be engaged in prescribed duties like for example householder now you see that rishabh dev he had 100 sons these days there is only two sons are allowed in india there are some government, uh, the rule they have put is like that. You are allowed one daughter, one son, or two daughters, or two sons. You are not allowed more than two children in India. Many government offices have put restriction. Mm -hmm. uh, in China also they put that, uh, that only one child was allowed. But then it happened that China's young population started building so fast. Finally, they told that even children who are born out of wedlock, we will actually register them, they realized, because the population was rapid, dropping drastically. Now, if mother and father are in old age home, they will not feel happy. How can they feel happy if they are in old age home? <coughs> because why the, although all the facility, good food, clothes are given in the old age home, but they are not happy there, because they have been not educated about how to practice devotional service uh, uh, that's why they are not able to be happy in the old age home. Uh, everyone should be trained how to practice devotional service. If they can practice devotional service, then they can be happy either at home or even in old age home. Uh, they, they can be uh, they can be happy. And so previously there was a joint family system and people were more happy. And now there's a nuclear family, and as a result. Um, uh, the, peop the people are, uh, that happiness is not there anymore. Current family has much more happiness to offer. Mm. So, mm, Krishna consciousness helps one to get out of the material entanglement. But even though one may be engaged in prescribed duties, therefore, without being fully in Krishna consciousness, no one should suddenly give up his prescribed duties and become a so called yogi or transcendentals, transcendentalist artificially. Mm. So first, one should try to cultivate one's bhakti. Suddenly, don't take saffron cloth or brahmachari cloth. Uh, no need to be in family duty also. First, develop bhakti. When your bhakti has matured, uh, then obviously you should uh, uh, you should uh, take saffron cloth or sannyas or anything. When your bhakti has matured, you should do that. It is better to be situated in one's position and to try to attain Krishna consciousness under superior training. Huh? One should stay in one's position and try to attain Krishna consciousness under superior training. Thus, one may be freed from the clutches of Maya. Actually, clutches of Maya, everyone is under clutches of Maya. One time, Prahlad, he was, um, <clears throat> he asked Bhagwan that, you know, why you are not liberating everyone? Why you are not giving liberation to everyone? Then Bhagavan said that tomorrow, anyone wants to come to Vaikuntha, you can bring them to Vaikuntha. I welcome them with open arms. So Prahlad, he went to every house and he said, you can come with me to Vaikuntha. Tomorrow you'll be allowed in Vaikuntha. But no one was ready. So then he saw one old man. He was lying with a... Uh, because he was coughing so much. He was all time coughing. So he's sons and daughters-in-law they have kept him outside the home uh, they told him you sleep in the courtyard they put a cot for him there underneath the neem tree and he was coughing uh, you know uncontrollably mm -hmm. and uh, he was practically good for nothing now nothing he was good for he could not do much work could barely walk properly uh, so Prahlad came to him and said you know why don't you come to Vaikuntha with me then he said well you may say that I may come to Vaikuntha, but I have some seva to do. I have some service to do to my children. Then Prahlad asked that old man, what service you are probably doing? 
and he said you know that um, um, all day long I sit in the courtyard here under the new tree. If any beggar will come, I drive them away by speaking harsh words to them. Go away, you will not get anything here, not even a morsel of rice here. Get out, we will not give you even one rupee. Get out. So I will speak harsh words to them and the beggars go away. So this service I am doing in the daytime. And in the night time, I cough all night long. So I cough and hearing my coughing sound, the thieves don't come because they think that someone is there in the house. So he said, I have a very important role to play and I'm not going to come to Vaikuntha just because you're telling me to come. Uh, I will I will let nature take its course. I have some duty to do to my children. Mm. Means the children have ignored him. No one is consulting them to him. No one is properly talking to him. So, <clears throat> But he is so dedicated to his children. Understand? That although he is getting a chance, Prahlad is offering him a chance to go to Vaikuntha, he is simply not interested in going to Vaikuntha. Then Prahlad went to another, um, uh, they said, let me see who is the worst kind of creature in this world. So he saw one, Prahlad saw one uh, uh, pig, hog. And the hog was eating stool and uh, just rolling in the clay, the dirt and all. But Prahlad said to the hog, why don't you come to Vaikuntha with me? Then he said, well, um, you know what? Actually, I'm getting the best of the food here. I'm getting fresh stool every day to eat. Mm. Then actually, we think uh, we think that what type of happiness can be there in eating stool? Uh, um, but uh, we, saying, we, we think that the hog species has no happiness. But you know what? Actually, hogs think the same about us. The hogs think that what these human beings are enjoying. We are enjoying so much more than them. They have barely, they can marry one wife. If you marry another wife, then as per Hindu law, you can be arrested and put in the jail. But uh, the hogs, they have no limit on girlfriends. Uh, we have, now we are sitting. I'm sitting on a very comfortable chair. And I sleep on a very comfortable mat. Uh, fan is on. But hogs can sleep anywhere. But they think that human beings are not really enjoying. And the demigods also think the same about the human beings. The demigods are saying that what these human beings are enjoying. They are nothing they are enjoying compared to us. Understand? But suddenly, whether the hogs or human beings, we are hogs or demigods, we are better than demigods and better than hogs. Because we can practice bhakti. Mm. <clears throat> we can practice bhakti in this human form of life. Mm. So therefore, <clears throat> Even demigods want to take birth in human form of life because bhakti is so much easy in the human form of life. Mm. So all life, mm, all life we have spent in uh, spent in collecting money and making arrangements for our children. But I doubt if we may remember our children, we may make arrangements for their future comfort, keep a lot of property for them. But I doubt that they will care for us when we become old. Uh, understand why they don't care? Because the mothers, uh, they are themselves working now outside. They have very little time to take care of their children. And uh, that, that intimacy which mothers were giving to the children before, that is now going away because the women are also very busy. Uh, so as a result, the children also don't feel so much for the mother. Mm. So as soon as she becomes old, they just put her in the old age home. Uh -huh. So now this is the situation in the society and um, it's not a very happy situation. So here, Sadrusham Cheshtate Sasya Prakrute Gyanvanapi Prakriti Myanti Bhutani Nigraha Kim Krishna. Sadrusham in accordance, Cheshtate endeavors Sasya with his own Prakrite nature Gyanva a man of knowledge, api evam, even prakritim nature, yanti follow, bhutani all beings, nigraha separation, kim what, rishati can do. Even a man of knowledge acts in accordance with his natural disposition. For all beings follow their nature. What can be achieved by repression of the senses? One may raise the following question. A person who does not obey the order of a king is punished. 
So if a person does not follow the order of Parameshwara, the Supreme Controller, is he not punishable? Is he not punished as well? Should he not fear punishment from him? In response to Bhagavan says, yes, this is true. However, those who are engaged only in satisfying their senses are unable to follow the order of the king or of Parameshwara, even though they may even though they can discriminate, their nature has become like this. So how many people, you know, they know that smoking is injurious to health? And how many people abstain from smoking just because there is a warning? Like many times I travel by train in India and I see that people are smoking. And they, it is written there that if you are caught smoking, then you will be given 250 rupees fine. But even at the risk of uh, getting fined um, or even maybe um, uh, prosecuted, they, they just cannot stop smoking because they are so addicted to it. Mm. So they, although there is, they know that uh, holding money or uh, black marketing uh, or, you know, uh, yeah, or, or for that matter smuggling, uh, smuggling gold or any contraband or even um, narcotics, you know, it's, it's punishable offense. Mm. There are some countries like uh, Russia where there is no investigation. Immediately you are put behind bar. Mm. Uh, so, but India at least a little bit linear. But in the country like Russia, uh, like you know, just uh, if they if they find just a little bit narcotics with you, immediately they arrest. So like that. So, uh, but you know, people uh, people get caught again and again by the police, and again and again they go to jail. And again and again they come out, and again and again they do the same thing. Now this is very surprising. Although they are defying the law, they get punished for the punished for breaking the law, but still they cannot give up that propensity of sinning. And this is very, this is a matter of great wonder. How are these happens like this? Because their nature has become stubborn. So the present verse, beginning with Sadrusham, is spoken to explain this. People may know that sinful activity will lead to punishment from the royal court or even going to hell. They may even understand that this will bring infamy and criticism. Hmm. Still, because of the nature that they have acquired over a prolonged period, they act according to according to the temperament resulting from their sinful deeds, which brings only misery. Generally speaking, in India, the kings used to give punishment. Uh, that was the duty of the kings to give punishment. Uh, uh, actually, I read a very nice story about uh, Sena. Sena. Uh, you might have um, heard about there was a barber by the name Sena. Uh, and one time he was doing some um, worship of Thakurji. His Thakurji is Krishna, actually. He was worshiping maybe deity of Krishna or Vishal. He was praying to him, at least. And uh, king wanted to be shaven. Huh? So king wanted to be shaven. So that time um, the king sent a um, messenger that tells Sena Barber, his name was Sena, Sena Barber should come and shave me. But um, because Sena was so absorbed in uh, worshipping Vithal, the wife of Sena told that oh, he is not at home. Hmm. Uh, he is not at home, he has gone outside. Huh? So anyway, but he even said he was worshipping Lord Vithala. Huh? All right. Then um, another messenger, uh, the king sent. Another messenger also came and then that time he also was told by his wife, Sena's wife, that he has gone outside. Then the third messenger came, but third messenger was told by a neighbor. There was actually a neighbor and he told secretly to the third messenger that actually Sena is not here. Sena is not gone outside. He is in his uh, prayer room and he was uh, he is worshipping Thakurji and glorifying Thakurji and he is actually deceiving the king by telling his wife is deceiving the king by telling that he is not at home. But actually he is inside praying to the Lord. So when the messenger reported to the king, he said that Sena Barba is at home but he is doing worship and that's why his wife is telling that he is not at home. The king was Muslim. He became very angry. He said, take one leather bag, huge leather bag or leather sack, and just place Sena in that leather bag, tie up that leather bag and throw it in the river. 
Suppose you are take you are put inside a leather bag, very huge leather body bag, and you are it is sewn up and tied completely tightly, and you are thrown in the river. You cannot break that leather and come out. You will simply drown, uh, or you will meet a very slow and um, you know slow death in either way, you know, because that bag may float on the water or may you may be just drown. Huh? You will meet your watery grave. So king ordered such a heavy punishment for. Sena. Hmm. So that time Vithal, he could not tolerate that my devotee is being punished. So Vithal, he took the shape of the Sena barber and uh, he came to his house and he collected his razor because they use the Indian razor for shaving and all. And uh, all the paraphernalia, he came in the box, he took that box and he went disguised as Sena to the king's palace, Muslim king's palace. Then he nicely massaged the king with oil, cut his hair and shampooed his hair very nicely. As he was shampooing, because it was Krishna himself had disguised as the Sena barber, the king was in ecstasy. He was feeling such comfort in his body. Finally, all the shaving was done, shampooing was done, massaging, oil massage, everything was done. Then um, Lord Krishna was disguised as the Sena barber poured some, uh, you know, bowl, some, um, some perfume, jasmine perfume. And then when the king looked inside the jasmine perfume, he saw the reflection of four-arm form of Krishna, Vishanka, Chakra, Gada, Padma, in Dwarka. So because in Dwarka, Krishna sometimes manifests four-arm form, and sometimes he manifests manifest four-arm form. And when king saw the reflection of Krishna uh, in that um, jasmine scent, bowl of jasmine sand, he fell unconscious. And still Krishna kept on massaging him. And then after that he told the Sena Barbar, the Sena Barbar was not there, Krishna himself was massaging him, say you have to stay with me only, you cannot go home now. You, uh, you have to stay, I will give you a room here in the palace and you have to be next to me. Uh, because I like your uh, like like your touch so much. So when he said it all right, I'll just quickly come back and we tell uh, the king he said, okay, just wait a minute. And gave him actually a sack of gold coins. So we tell he took the sack of gold coins and he went to the house of Sena and we tell poured the gold coins on the floor and uh, he replaced that um, box of tools is a paraphernalia of the barber, like the knife and this and that, scissors, everything. He placed on the ground there and Krishna left from there. So then again messenger came and Sena was called there. So Sena went there and then, then the king said, told him that, you know, you gave me, you showed me a very beautiful form in the reflection today morning. So I want to see that form of uh, now, because today morning you showed me in that bowl of jasmine scent. I want to see that reflection again. And then Sena realized that actually it was Krishna only who had done this trick. Huh? So um, Krishna himself has done this trick. Then told me that actually who you saw was Krishna. And Krishna was uh, shaved you and massaged you. So then uh, he fell down at the feet of Sena the king and asked for humans. So Bhagavan is like that, always protecting his devotees. He's always doing it. So people know, people may know that sinful activity lead to punishment, royal court or even going to hell. And they may even understand that this will bring infamy and criticism. Still because of the nature that they are acquired for a prolonged period, that according to the temperament resulting from their sinful deeds, which brings only misery. Such people only follow their own disposition. They can, however, be restrained by my discipline or that of a king. A person with an impure heart can receive purifying impressions, sometimes of performing selfless action offered to Bhagavan Nishkam Kamila. So here, suppose my heart is impure. Then I want good samskaras on my heart, good impressions. What I should do? I should perform selfless action. I should not uh, worry about Fruity results. And the results of the action 
that I perform, I should offer it to Krishna. This is called Vishpankarma. Kaina vacha manasendri erva buddhyat manava. So, Bhagavatam says this prayer. Huh? Karomi adhya sakalam parasme narayana yeti samar payami. Narayana yeti samar payami. That whatever action I do, the result of all actions I am offering to Krishna. Hmm. So here, um, such people only follow their own disposition. They can, however, be restrained by my discipline. Hmm. A person with an impure heart can receive purifying impressions by performing selfless action offered to Bhagavan, Vishkam And a person with a pure heart can receive them through Jnana Yoga. Generally speaking, there is a higher eligibility for practicing Jnana Yoga. If your heart is pure, you can practice Jnana Yoga. But suppose your heart is impure, then you are better off with Nishkam Karma Yoga. Selfless action dedicated to Krishna. Both types of people can be enlightened. It is true that neither process can help a person whose heart is extremely pure. But Bhakti which appears by my mercy, can easily deliver even such simple process. Mm. So you see that bhakti, um, <clears throat> bhakti is so powerful. Huh? Bhakti can purify even the persons who are dogless. Aho bhatacha, aho bhatasva pachato gariyan, yad jivagre vartate nama tudyam tepus tapaste junur sasnur arya, brahma nuchur grama grunandiyate. Oh my lord, persons who chant the holy name of your lordship, are far, far advanced in spiritual life, even if born in families of dog eaters. Such chanters have undoubtedly performed all kinds of um, austerities and sacrifices, bathed in all places, all sacred places, and finished all scriptural studies. Like a lot of people, they say, I don't know, Maharaj, I'm not qualifying in an exam, a competitive exam, or in interview, I'm failing. Or I'm not getting admission in a good college, you know. So I was reading a book actually. <laughs> One person wrote it. He said, if you are not getting selected for the civil services, IAS, IPS, ICS, IRS, then you should chant this mantra. Simply by chanting the name of Hegriva, one becomes very intelligent. Understand? So, like that, Bhagavan's name is very easy. Anyone, even if he is born in a low class family, even his body is impure, uh, anyone can practice bhakti. Hmm. Suppose prasad, before the prasadam bhoga is offered to Krishna, no one can touch it. Even an impure person will look at it, that will become impure. But once it is offered to Krishna, then that Mahaprasad is so powerful, then even if it is uh, fallen from the hmm, Mouth of a dog, one can eat that. Mm. Actually, very nice story comes that there was a king. That king, he had, uh, he was uh, living in Jagannath Temple only, near Jagannath Temple in Puri. So one time, but he was very much addicted to playing a game of dice. Very much addicted. So one time he was throwing dice and playing by himself and laughing also. And suddenly, uh, suddenly, the priest from Jagannath Temple came and offered the king some Mahaprasad. Because he was uh, throwing dice by his right hand, he extended his left hand. When Pujari said, Take Prasad, he extended his left hand. Then what happened? Oh, he, the Pujari didn't give him Mahaprasad. Because how can he offer Prasad on the left hand? Generally, he should take Prasad on the right hand, not on the left hand. So, left hand is considered much impure because we clean ourselves with the left hand. So, uh, he didn't offer any pressure to king. But after the game of dice was finished, the king began to lament. He said, where is my pressure? Then the, everyone told him what happened, that you extended your left hand. And the king said, alas, alas, I committed a great offense to Jagannath Mahaprasad by extending my left hand to receive the Mahaprasad. So, I should get rid of this left hand. So, 
he told his commander the king told the commander that my dear my dear senapati commander in chief actually one vampire uh, means female ghost she is uh, troubling me in the night time she sometimes extend, uh, extends uh, her arm from the window and she pokes me by her fingers so what you do is you somehow come in the night time and when she will extend her, her hand to the window uh, you should uh, and try to poke me you should immediately cut off her hand so king night time what he did he slept near the window inside his uh, room and he extended his hand outside the window and at uh, that time the commander in chief was ready and he saw when the king's hand extended he thought it was a vampire's hand which was going inside the window uh, he didn't know that actually it is the hand of king which has come out he took a sword and he cut out the hand of the king so king had only one hand you know king had only one hand <clears throat> so later on he realized that it was king's hand so the commander in chief he asked forgiveness from the king he said i am knowingly i thought it was vampire hand so i cut off your hand unknowingly the king said yes i only arranged for this punishment because my now i will never extend my left hand uh, i will never extend my left hand uh, to honor prashadam because i have no more left hand so anyways they brought that left hand in front of jagannath uh, in a palanquin uh, and they uh, placed that left hand which was cut from the krishna uh, the priest hand in front of jagannath and all of a sudden that left hand became some fruit or something and then uh, when the king came in front of jagannath and offered pranam by his one hand jagannath gave him back his hand which was uh, which was actually cut by the uh, commander and so story goes like that so the point here is that this is the importance of jagannath mahaprasad this is one lima bhakti to honor jagannath mahaprasad shishkam parishitam vapi anitam urud duradeshita prapti matrana bhaktavyam na tatra kala vicharana hmm. yuni prasad is rotten you are fallen from the mouth of a dog eater or even dog you can honor it mahaprasad will never lose its glory hmm. So, um, both types of people can be enlightened. A person with an impure heart can be received can receive purifying impressions, samskara by performing selfless action dedicated to Bhagwan, nishtam karma yoga. And a person with a pure heart can receive them through jnana yoga. Both types of people can be enlightened. It's true that neither process can help a person whose heart is extremely pure. But bhakti, which appears by his mercy, by my mercy, you can easily deliver even such sinful people. As it is said in the Sunda Quran, Aho Tidhan, Aho Dhanyo Hi Asi Devarshe, Rupaya Yasya Kshikshana, Nicho Ki Utkuloko Leve Lugdako Ratim Achyu. O Narada, all glory to you, because of your mercy, this low class hunter has in just one moment attained deep attachment or Ratim. For the lotus feet of Sri Bhagwan and is manifesting the ecstatic symptoms of Pulaka in which one's bodily hair stand on end. So, this is the power of the Narada Association. The Narada Association is uh, very purified. Gangara Parasha Hile Pashate Pavana Darshani Pavitra Karo. Eto Maraguna Gangara Parasha Hile Pashate Pavana Darshani Pavitra Karo Eto Maraguna. Suppose someone is um, taking bath in the Ganga, then he will be purified by Ganga. Uh, only after taking bath but vaishnavas are so glorious that if you see them even if you have the glance at them uh, they will purify you understand so vaishnavas are very very great <clears throat> vaishnavas are not ordinary persons so narad muni is so great narad muni simply by mercy uh, even a low class hunter low class hunter like valmiki Lalmiki also was delivered by uh, Narad Muni, he was also a hunter. But he had killed many, many Brahmanas. 
But Narmuni told him, just sit in this one place, don't get up, just chant Ram, 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 Ram. And by chanting the name of Ram, he became very powerful. And he, and he compiled Ramayana. So Ramayana, the essence of the entire Ramayana is the Ram Nam, Krishna Nam. Krishna Nam is Avatari and Ram Nam is actually Avatar. So inside Krishna Nam, Ram Nam is included. But inside Ram Nam, Krishna Nam is not included. So Bhakti is so powerful. So Saratha Varshini Prakashika Vritti, a person with uncontrolled senses may be able to discriminate, but cannot restrain his senses by knowledge of scriptures. Mm. So it is very important to restrain senses. But uh, suppose your senses are uncontrolled, then simply the knowledge of scriptures will not help you. A lot of people actually you see that even in Quran, in Bible, in Torah, and also Guru Granth Sahib, and also Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavata, uh, people either follow any of these books. Uh, a lot of followers in the world uh, follow the Quran, the Holy Quran. Some people follow the Holy Bible. And there are so many commandments which are given in the Quran, Torah, Bible, and thou shalt not kill, uh, illicit sex should not be done. Uh, all these things are told also in all scriptures. But people are unable to follow the instructions of the scriptures uh, because of lack of sadhu sangha. Uh, for example, Stambhayan Atmanatmanam Yavat Satvam Yathashutam Na Shashaka Samadhatu Mano Madana Vepida. After seeing the prostitute, the mind of Ajamil became agitated. He tried hard to control his mind by fortitude and knowledge of scripture. But being agitated by Cupid, he was unable to do so. So Ajamil knew he was a Brahman, he was not from low class family, he was a Brahmin family. He was a Vedic Brahmana. <laughs> but when he saw the prostitute embracing Shudra Barsan in the jungle, he could not actually control his mind. And he ended up getting married to that uh, prostitute. Understand? And begetting many children from her womb. Hmm? So this is the mind cannot be controlled. Hmm? An uncontrolled, degraded desires can be removed by the powerful influence of the association of elderly persons and or sadhu sangha. Hmm? So when we associate with the saintly persons, then all these degraded desires will go away. Mm. A very nice verse from Srimad Bhagavata. 11 Canto 26, Chapter 26 verse. By their powerful speech, saintly people can completely cut asunder all the unfavorable attachments of the mind. So basically, the saintly persons, they carry, their tongues are not tongues, they are like swords. Their words are very sharp like swords. And they completely cut us under all our attachments. Uh, we are attached to the family life, we are attached to wife, children, sons, uh, boyfriend, girlfriend, uh, house, and whatnot. So many attachments we have. But when we are start associating with the saintly persons, then what happens? <clears throat> we become completely mm, detached from all these uh, uh, temporary relationships. <laughs> we <laughs> develop permanent relationship with Sri Krishna. Vyasanya means attachments that make one averse to Sri Bhagavan. So, Tato Musanga Musraja Tatsu Sajjeda Buddhima Santaiva Chinnanti Vyasangam Mano Chinnanti Mano Vyasanga Mukti means attachments that make one averse to Sri Bhagavan. Suppose someone is very attached to Likar. Uh, then that person will be not interested in Krishna. Someone is very attached to meditating, uh, or someone is attached to illicit sex, or someone is attached very much to gambling, then he will not be interested in Krishna. He will become averse to Krishna. Here the word Eva Mangala is the powerful speech of saintly persons alone. Pious hmm? actions, holy places, demigods, and knowledge of scriptures are in and in and of themselves, not able to destroy and beneficial attachments. This should be understood. So someone may visit, someone may perform a lot of pious activities like giving food to the needy, opening schools, hospitals, colleges. Uh, but those pious activities will not uh, destroy our attachments, unwanted attachments. Uh, the holy places, someone may visit so many holy places, uh, but still 
these holy places will not remove your attachment to the material world and to the unwanted attachments. Even you worship different demigods or you study many, many scriptures, still your attachment will remain. But the saintly persons, they can uh, remove your attachments by their sweet words, very sharp words, sweet and sharp words. So the Bhakti Thakur quotes Krishna as saying, O oh, Arjuna, do not think that a man of knowledge will attain auspiciousness, liberation from bondage, if he simply deliberates on spirit and matter. Hmm. Suppose you are thinking, what is spirit? The spirit is the soul. What is the matter? Earth, water, fire, air, ether. Everything I survey is material. So sense of discrimination. This will also not help um, so much to become free from unwanted habits. And accept the shelter of sanya dharma by impetuously giving up material nature, guna, and its related activities, karma. Mm. A lot of people, for example, they take sannyas and they don't stay at their own house. But then they end up staying in other houses. They end up staying in other houses and treating other houses to, to be their own houses, uh, actually. So attachment should be given. Uh, even after the conditioned soul has become uh, enriched with knowledge, he will still endeavor in accordance with his long-standing disposition. It is not true that one can give up one's nature by suddenly restraining it. All bound souls will continue to act ever according to the disposition they have naturally acquired over a prolonged time, a long, prolonged period. The proper way to give up this nature is to carefully perform all karma in accordance with that nature while being situated in it. As long as the renunciation that accompanies the symptoms of bhakti yoga does not appear in the heart. The only means to attain self auspiciousness is nishkam karma yoga offered to Sri Bhagavan. It's because in this practice a person can perform his prescribed duties and also benefit from the purifying impressions generated by them. A person who renounces his prescribed duty will ultimately deviate from the path of perfection. So, okay. You are a doctor, then all right, you can work as a doctor. And um, there was actually uh, one couple, they were surgeons, and they were um, they were so attached to Harikatha that they will simply turn on the Harikatha and they will do the operation. And they never made any mistake. Huh? Means Harikatha became their very life. Although they were surgeon and they were doing surgery, they will play Harikatha even in the operation theater. Huh? So, um, they became very much attached. So, prescribed duties you can keep on doing. But why not chant Ram, Ram, Krishna, Krishna, Govind, Govind, Hari, Hari, some name of God all the time. So, uh, there is no need to give up one's prescribed duty or ashrama. Just remain situated in chanting the holy name. For example, there was one person who was going to study in Germany. So, when he was going to study in Germany, his parents were very worried uh, that uh, what will happen to our son. Previously, you see in India, the people were very pious. So, Britishers tried to change their ways, but they could not convert the Indian people. They were always in pious. Then the Britishers deliberated. What is happening? We are trying to push our culture, and uh, they are not accepting our culture, and they are stuck to their own, own Vedic culture and their habits. Uh, they are not uh, interested in meat eating, gambling, intoxication, and this sex, and all these things uh, we are trying to promote. So, what is what is the reason they are not able to promote uh, in a big way in Indian society or values or distorted values of the British society? So then they realized that Yatha Raja Tatha Praja, that all these Indian people are imitating uh, or following in the footsteps of their own kings. And the kings are very righteous. And as long as these kings will remain righteous, the subjects will keep on following the ideals set by the king, and they will not be able to, be, uh, they will not deviate from the culture. So then what the did, Britishers did, they start, slowly started sending all the kings to England, London. And there they were specifically told to cut their shikha and take out their kanti mala, tulsi mala, Told them to eat meat, yeah, you know, any meat and every meat, drink liquor also, and not wear dhoti anymore, 
they were told to wear the trousers and when they returned to india they were completely trained to be materialistic persons so seeing the degradation of their own kings who had returned from london and then our indian people they started imitating the their own king and then the whole society uh, became spoiled uh, and degraded and so this was the clever trick of the britishers uh, clever trick of the britishers uh, so when by my mercy or by the mercy of my devotee bhakti yoga appears in the heart there is no need to follow one's prescribed duty because this path of bhakti is superior to nishkam karma yoga suppose someone is uh, like a lot of people uh, like uh, in our uh, <coughs> matha now some sage will come like manohar singh ji now he has expressed an interest he has a shop actually in bangalore a very nice shop computer shop but he met gurudev thrice and then he took initiation from shripad dandi maharaj now he wants to do go seva he wants to dedicate his rest of his life to go seva uh, although he is from his uh, from a rich family there is nothing shortage of him but he says that now whatever time is remaining in my life i want to dedicate it to serve the cows mother cow huh? now this is a very very good thing huh? so many many rich persons also they sometimes want to dedicate their rest of their life for protecting the cows or preaching sanatan dharma serving the deities uh, this is also very good huh? so um, bhakti yoga is very very powerful huh? bhakti yoga doesn't expect any qualification huh? for example ajamil's case we take ajamil was so fallen huh? but because he chanted the name of narayan his son was named narayan or jagai madai were so fallen they had not left any scene every scene they had done but because of bhakti yoga by mercy of pure devotee like chandra prabhu chaitanya mahaprabhu ardas thakur prostitute also was delivered prostitute tried to convert haridas thakur but haridas thakur was not converted to her ways but rather he converted the prostitute to works bhakti so pure devotee is for example haridas thakur haridas thakur apparently didn't take any initiation he was a guru Uh, he just kept on chanting the name of Krishna. But we should accept it because it will be very difficult for us to get perfection unless we accept Guru. Uh, so, anyways, uh, some people say Ram Das Tagore is Guru, but anyways, um, and one Guru they said that actually had no Guru. Uh, but anyways, um, for example, Shabari. Shabari was born in low class family. Uh, tribal family, and she went to the hermitage of Matangaroshi, and she wanted to stay there. So when she wanted to stay in near the hermitage, the many sadhus objected to her staying near the hermitage. They said she is a low class woman, and uh, how can she stay in our hermitage or near our hermitage? So they drove her away from their hermitage. Um, Matangaroshi was very much uh, liking. Um, um shabari so he handed over that whole ashrama to shabari the sadhu told either she or we you either accept shabari or you accept us you cannot accept both of us you have to you have to make a choice then that sadhu he said all right i will accept shabari so he he said to shabari that i am giving you this particular ashrama to manage and now i am going from here Uh, because I am going to do austerities now, so now you will be the in charge of this ashram. Everyone else had left that ashram, and there was one lake called Pampa Sarovar. Even today, that lake is there, and uh, they used to drink the water of that Pampa Sarovar, the sadhus. But it had become contaminated. Mm-hmm. It had become very contaminated, and many insects had developed in it. So when Ramchandra came there, he asked the sadhus that is everything okay. They said everything is fine. But one particular lake called Pampa Sarovar is very contaminated. Many insects are growing there, and we cannot drink the water. The water is no more potable, and we have no other source of water. So please, uh, if we can wash your feet in that water, then uh, that water will be purified. But that water again became purified. Even if Ram placed his feet in that water, some sadhus say that even the insects, which were small, like half inch, they became four inch long. even ram placed his feet in that water because they had offended shabari 
So therefore, washing, worshiping the lotus feet of Ram also didn't help them. So then they said, how will we become free from offense of offending Sabari? Then Ram told that you bring her um, very, with great respect and wash her feet and drink that water, all you. Then you will become free from the offenses at a lotus feet and Bhakti will come to you. So they brought Shabari in near Pampa Sarabar with great uh, iron reverence and then they bathed her lotus feet there and then that water became very pure. Uh, so um, this is the thing that uh, pure devotees, uh, they are very, very pure. Even if they are born in low family, uh, they, if they are in the name of Krishna, we should respect them. Anyone who chants in the name of Krishna, we should respect them. So thus we have ended our class today. Uh, next time we will um, begin from the verse number 34. Uh, this is the gist of the class. Hare Krishna. One chakal patravesha krupa sindhu vecha paridharam pavane bhyo vaishnava bhyo namo namo. If anyone has any comments or questions, please um, you can ask now. Um, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Then that's enough. <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj and the Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Mm, can you do a Jai Diwani, please, Maharaj? Jai. 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 Bhakti Vedanta Trivikram Gosai Maharaj ki Jain Tila Prishtam Vishnu Paas Shishimat Guru Gundu Gosai Maharaj ki Jain Tila Prishtam Vishnu Paas Shishimat Bhakti Vedanta Sai Maharaj ki Jain Aacharya ki Shri Shishimat Bhakti Pragyan ki Shri Gosai Maharaj ki Jain Tila Prishtam Vishnu Paas Shishimat Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Gosai Prabhupada Thakur ki Jain Prem Sikha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gada Adar Shri Vasari Gaura Bhakta Vrindu ki Jain Jain Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopi Gopa Vardhan Dwar Sunat Mukha Sajum Mandal Ki Jai Harinam Sankirtan Ki Jai Ananda Koti Vaishna Gurinda Ki Jai Trendi Swami Shishwil Bhakti Dhanda Dandi Maharaj Ki Jai Nam Nishta Santa Shari Vidyas Prabhu Ki Jai Shri Ram Chandra Navratra Ki Jai Samagata Bhakta Parinda Ki Jai Nitai Gaur Sitana Premanande Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Om Jagal Patru Vashya Krupasa Mandal Ki Patra Nam Pani Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna Shripad Bhakti Vedanta Vishnu Deitamar Ki Jai Vanshakha Patrubhya Stiya Kripa Sunni Vyavaj